Hi, I'm Neil Lorenz, and I'm here to welcome you to the 21st Annual Kettle Carvers Club Carving Show and Competition. We've got over 40 carvers here today, and I'm going to go around and show you and introduce you to many of the carvers and introduce you to their work. So let's get inside and explore the show. Hello, I'm Neil Lorenz. I'm from Sheboygan. I've been carving for about 14 years, and uh, I've, my interest in carving has, has gone from uh, Christmas ornaments to figures to relief carving. And uh, I try to uh, do a little bit of carving every day. And um, like I said, my, my interest has now been in, in caricature carving. You can see a number of them here. One I finished up this past year is this fisherman who uh, is, is ready to get out and do a little fishing for the day. I took a class recently where I carved these little uh, caricatures of Jiminy Cricket. Here are some of my ornaments that I've done. And I've also tried my hand at relief carving. This Santa was a, a weekend class that I took. And uh, it, uh, I, I like the effect of having the bark on the outside edges. Adds a little more interest. Our next carver is Tom Julian. He's from Middleton, Wisconsin. Tom, I see you, you're, you're really doing a lot of wildlife carvings. What types of wood do you like to use? Um, it depends on uh, what I'm doing um, for a fish like that. I like to use basswood. For something like this, it's a combination of a bunch of different woods. Like this one here is a white pine that was found wood out of my yard. Interesting. The bird body is tupelo. The wings are basswood. This is a found piece of wood that I cut up and made it look like a stump. This is just... Um, basic piece of plywood down here and this and this is sawdust with just glue okay to make it everything right down to the rocks and the leaves are are carved out of wood everything except this this is this is actually uh, metal okay what type of paint do you use it depends on what I'm doing if I'm doing a small bird like the birds over there then I'll often use oils something like this is all acrylics okay do you find that one type of paint is easier than another to work with the oil is definitely easier to work with, but it's real expensive. Okay. Hmm. Interesting. Um, how many pieces do you have in a competition today? Um, three. Are they all birds or There's a uh, smallmouth bass. Then uh, I do combinations like this. And so one's a Gila monster with a road runner and some young Gila monsters coming out of the egg. And then one is a barn owl on top of a rat. Oh, interesting. Well, we'll try and catch those uh, when we get up to the competition area. Thank you for talking to us today. You're welcome. Our next carver is Greg Wirtz from Wisconsin Rapids. Greg, I see your, your interest lies in relief carving. Yes, uh, I do uh, quite a bit of relief. That's probably the majority, and that's what I teach. It's uh, called an intaglio style, which is a little different. What uh, makes it different? It's where I use the wood as the frame. In other relief, you carve that back and your picture pops out. This way, it's in the, the piece. The carving is into the wood. Right. Okay. And it's a very ancient style. It is on the pyramids. Hmm. So it's a, just a different st style I brought back. Certainly seems that you've perfected the style. I enjoy it. It's fun. Do you uh, use different types of finish on this uh, type of work? The finish is pretty much the same. I um, paint with acrylics and use uh, Minwax to um, seal give it a nice seal. You say you teach classes all over the state or do you go further than that? All over the country. Um, I teach in South Carolina, North Carolina, all over. Okay. I understand you're involved with the uh, International Woodcarvers Congress. Yes, um, that's uh, centered in uh, Iowa uh, and um, Bettendorf, isn't it? Yes, in Bettendorf. 
Uh, they have the show in Makokita now at the fairgrounds there. And um, it's one of the premier shows in the country. It is. It has a really nice show, plus a lot of classes with uh, top notch instructors from Canada and all over. You bring carvers in from Europe for the show, even? Yes. It's quite a draw. Well, thank you for uh, talking about your carvings with us today. And uh, I assume you're in the competition? Yes, I am. Oh. I have uh, three pieces entered. Excellent. Uh, so good luck with that. Thank you. Our next carver is Larry Lino. Larry, where are you from? I'm from Sheboygan, Wisconsin. And how long have you been carving? Oh, not that many years. Actually, this is the first year I took a course at uh, Fox Valley uh, Tech. Okay. And I, but I've been doing Intarsa for maybe 10 years. You know. Okay. And every year it gets a little bit better. You know, Certainly. Certain techniques change. So the, the fish that you have here on your table, are, are those from the class? or uh, The one that I have from the class is I have been uh, being judged. And this one here I had started like uh, five years ago and it was laying around. And then I took the class and I finally learned some techniques. Mm -hmm. And I finished it finally. <laughs> no, that, sometimes that's how it goes. Yeah, that's how it goes, yeah. Uh, the, I see your, your other fish here on the table looks like a, a, a brook trout. A brook trout, yes. I carved that quite a few years ago, like 10 years ago or so. When you do a piece like that, I see you have a lot of work in those fins. Are those uh, separate pieces or are that all out of one piece That's of wood? That's all separate, separate pieces, yes. Mm -hmm. there, yeah. Nice, nice uh, technique on the paint on that. Okay, thank you very much. As you mentioned uh, in your introduction that you started in to work on intarsia. That's a little different than a lot of what our other uh, wood carvers and uh, how do you, you must enjoy that quite a bit. Oh yes, I, I, it's, it's quite a, a process you go through to, to do it. Uh, a lot of sawing and shaping and sanding and uh, uh, time, consume, time sure. consuming. So. Do you, uh, the paint on that is, is very intricate. Uh, what, what techniques do you use there? Uh, well, on the bird feeder, I painted the uh, cardinal and the, uh, uh, the goldfinch, and the others is basically all different uh, textures of wood. Yeah. Okay, so you're using a lot of different woods to bring out the color and... Mostly red, uh, western red cedar and uh, some cherry, some walnut, uh, uh, and, and that's about it. And then this was, uh, that the cardinal was redwood, uh, but... Uh, you added a little more color to it. And I couldn't get it red enough, so I added a little more color. That's sure. correct. Well, I'm glad you brought those here today. Okay. It's it's a little different, like I said, and, and it offers to the public uh, uh, get a view of some of the other interesting things that we have at the show. Very good. Thank you. You're welcome. Our next, next exhibitor is Peggy Nelson. Peggy, where are you from? I'm from Lake Mills. And you have an entire table of uh, wood-burning objects. Why don't you tell us a little bit about them? Um, how long have you been doing it? I've been doing it a little over a year. Oh, uh, so quite my, new at it then. Yes. Uh, my dad has come to this show for many years, okay. and he passed away a year ago, October. And I just... Uh, Started it uh, in his tradition. Took a, took a whack at his wood burner, and, okay. and, and I love doing it. Okay. Yeah. So you're actually using his wood burner then? Yes. That's very nice. Uh, and. Do you, uh, do you buy the patterns or do you do your own drawings? Uh, some are my own, uh, some are my dad's. Uh, the little ch uh, this is my dad's, this was his favorite. Oh, little chickadee. That was his favorite. I'm yes. sure, it's a very nice item. Um, some, I just get an idea and I go on good old Google, the internet, <laughs> and get it, and we have a copy machine at, at where I work, and I just get it to the size I want. And, mm -hmm. and put it on the wood. Put it on the wood and fill it in. Many of your items are, are colored. Um, I, I understand that in wood burning, uh, you don't really use a pen and, or brush. You use a different technique. What is that? Um, I use an oil pencil. That's what my dad used. Um, I just are they? Uh, I'm not real familiar with that. Do you sharpen them like a colored pencil in the old days, or just like a colored pencil? Yeah, only they're a little softer, a little more more color and probably a little more permanent yeah they're more permanent and then I do seal everything too so the color stays on what type of sealer are you using on these um, I just use a shellac or um, is it a polyurethane no it's a polyurethane mm-hmm your work is is wonderful are you in 
entering items in our competition today? Do. Yes, I do have uh, a piece entered. It's a grouse. It's back on the judging table. Okay. Yeah. Well, good luck with your, uh, your items in the competition, and uh, thank you for talking with us today. Okay. Thank you very much. Our next carver is Don Burns. Don, where are you from? I'm from Sheboygan here. Okay, and how long have you been carving? I've been carving uh, thick nose. About 15, uh, I'd say about 15 years. And you're a member of the Kettle Carvers. That's right. And uh, you, you've, you've been active in our club for probably most of that 15 that. years. Yeah, okay. most of that. And uh, you've got quite a diverse uh, group of items here. What do you, what do you enjoy carving? Well, was the sports thing got hot, wasn't it? Okay. So. Packer, packer items, and I, I see you have a, even a, uh, a Chicago Bear uh, oh, plaque here. And this here is one of the prize. Classic, so classic ball in a cage. Classic, yes. Yeah. Yes. People have been carving those for probably a century. Everybody has to get one of them in. That's, that's very true. I'll sharing a table with him is... Uh, is Dick Jalovnik, you're also from Sheboygan. Yes, I am. And you've been carving with Don for quite a few years. I, I started uh, shortly before him, and he, I showed him one of my first projects. And uh, it was, uh, was a little axe. Oh, a little axe and, in the stump. And he, uh, he saw that, and he says, I'd like to do that too. So that's how we got started, and uh, we go to meetings together because our daughters were good friends, and uh, it uh, just exploded from that. And, I try to make things that uh, I don't see in the books, like my uh, my trophies. Like uh, these, uh, you do a little bit of bit of sports memorabilia oh, as yeah. well. Oh, yes. and, uh, uh, I love doing different things. I got pictures of uh, of orcas. Okay. I was in Alaska here uh, a couple of years ago, and my son and my son-in-law saw orcas. They're the only ones, so I felt made pictures for them. Okay. And then, um, over here I have, uh, I have these the pins. Heart, hearts with the uh, arrow through them. Right. I, that's my wife's there. Well, she's gone now. But all my children and my grandchildren, they all wanted one. So, of course. So I had to make, it keeps on going. Everybody wants one. And, uh, I remember uh, at one of our meetings uh, a few months ago, you brought in a, a ring that you had made. I don't, I don't see any here today, but uh, I would assume that was a rather difficult item to, to carve. Oh, I see you have a couple here. So they're, they're actually like a, a, a small, almost like a little wedding ring, but it, tell me, is, is it quite difficult to, to carve on an object that small and get it that thin? Well, you break a lot. <laughs> a lot of trial and error. All right, uh, you actually uh, drill the hole first. Yeah. These are made out of cherry. Okay. Drill, drill the hole first, and then I, I have a dowel that I slip them on, and then I'll shape them on there. And I use, instead of a knife, I'll use a rasp a lot. Okay, so you're okay. filing away a lot of that and, wood. Uh, I made approximately about 20 of these okay. for all my all the girls in okay. my family. Okay, I see you have uh, a letter on the top, a K on this one, so yeah, it's for... Uh, one of my daughters, her name is Kitty. Kat okay. For Kathleen. Uh, That's a, a kind of a unique item that I've never seen anybody else carving. So I started out like this, but my daughter says, that's a man's ring, okay. not a lady's ring. Okay. So that's how I went to the, dindle, uh, the gentle ones. Uh, that, well, a very unique item, and, and thank you for sharing those with us today. Our next carver is Gene Bengal. Where are you from, Gene? I am from Oshkosh, Wisconsin. And how long have you been carving? Uh, about 21 years. Oh, quite a, quite a long years. time. Yes. Uh, I see uh, by your table here that uh, you've got a number of large, large mammals. Uh, is that an interest of yours to carve? It is. I enjoy the animals because it can add uh, and the muscle structure to it and uh, work on fur production. Mm -hmm. And then finally the painting. Is a lot of work. Do you uh, wood burn a lot of the hair and, and get the movement? I do, yes. yes. Uh, after, I, after I carve the, and, and uh, use a little power to, to put some of the fur in, then I go back and break it up even further with the wood burner. Okay. What type of uh, painting are, are you doing? I'm doing acrylics. 
Okay. I, I like acrylics. Like the speed and the ease of working with acrylics. And, right. And I don't also have the odor that I, I don't care for the sure. odor of the oil. Sure. And, then, and you've done a little bit of work with uh, birds, I see, like the yes. cardinal on here? Yes, I, I've done uh, several birds in that. Uh, this one here was uh, my latest one here. And, and um, I like to do birds because i sort of a bird watcher. Okay. And I get out there and get some unique ideas from... from uh, well, you're familiar the with them and you can see them in your own yard. Right. Yeah. I know from talking with you in the past that you have an interest in caricature carvings and I see some very nice work here. Are these new for uh, new items that you've done? Yes, the uh, the doctor, the co country doctor there, uh, he's new this year and uh, he had to, he just caught my eye and I thought it would be kind of fun and I was also in the medical field, so n not as a doctor, but uh, okay. I was in the medical field and I thought I should have that as sort of... Um, just a piece to uh, finish up your career. Right. <laughs> now, the, the uh, feature piece that you have here is this um, alpine gentleman. Tell me a little bit about that. Right. That's a Bavarian uh, mountain climber, and uh, it was. I did take a class with uh, Carlin Honecker, and uh, it's uh, the the figure itself is all one piece. I did add on the lantern and that. Uh, and I did add a few features onto it, such as the, the wine flask or water flasks, mm -hmm. and uh, and then a, a little uh, coil of rope on the back and, okay. and that. Very uh, very nice piece. Is it also done in acrylic? It's done in acrylics. A wash. I use the wash to it, and so that I can have some of the wood grain showing through. Very effective. Very nice work. Uh, did, you said you traveled to take this co course, didn't you? Yes, I. Uh, this course was taken in uh, uh, Nebraska, Crete, Nebraska, at the Doan College. And Don't they? I, I understand they have a, a week-long class there every year. Yes, they do. It's uh, and they have feature carvers from all over the United States, and uh, it's it's really an exciting adventure, actually. Well, thank you for sharing your uh, your carvings with us today, Gene. Well, thank you. We're out in front of the municipal building now and our, our chainsaw carver this year is Dave Bartels. You can see some of his work. He's got quite a diverse grouping of carvings. If we can get his attention, uh, we'll go up and talk with him. Again, our featured uh, chainsaw carver is Dave Bartels. Dave, where are you from? Near Shano, Wisconsin. How long have you been chainsaw carving? total about 15 years. I see uh, you do a broad base of work from from birds to bears. Uh, what what do you enjoy most? Probably the eagles. They sort of connect with them and uh, they've always came out of the wood real easy for me. Very nice. What type of wood do you use? Just about anything that grows in Wisconsin. Most of the ones that I have here today for sale are either white cedar or butternut. Okay. Um, Looks as though you're you're doing a little bit of burning. Do you use a torch, or how do you how do you do that technique? Just a uh, map gas torch, like a small uh, butane torch. Okay, it adds a lot of nice texture. Um, you said you you don't necessarily put a finish on them. Uh, is that they don't really need the protection? I take it. Uh, cedar does not. Uh, it will turn dark gray after a while, so that's I leave it up to the customers. Some folks like everything to go natural. Others. Uh, wanted to secure it as close as we can with uh, the finishes. Okay. Um, it looks as though the bears are very popular. I, I, we saw some uh, up front, maybe they're uh, uh, got them doing different activities like roasting marshmallows and stuff. A little, little humor involved in your work. Yeah, there's always a little humor. I, most of the carvings are, people tell me they have a slight smirk to them. I, I guess that comes out, but um, yeah, the, there's a variety from the raccoons Raccoons sell well, the bears sell well, and uh, eagles also very popular, but do everything from people's pets to hoed eggs. Um. Well, you, you, we certainly are enjoying your work here today, and uh, good luck with your sales, and uh, we, we hope everybody has a nice day here at the show. Thank you for stopping with Thank us. Thank you.
Barber is Ron, Ron Ingen. Ron, where are you from? Sussex, Wisconsin. And I see you're a member of the Carbon Club in that area. Yes, it's the um, Lake Country Carvers out of Delafield. How long have you been a member there? Uh, about eight years. And you said you've carved for quite a few years. Yeah, 25 or so. Okay. And what? I've also taken like uh, instructors, about four different instructors I've had and things like this. And I do a little bit of teaching too. I've got three guys coming over my house and do some teaching. Sure. The guy here with me, uh, the first car he's ever done, he's got it in the show today. Oh, excellent. Uh, it look, looks as though the majority of your work is, is in birds. Yes, it is. I, I like doing the, uh, the waterfall and uh, I'm, I'm working on a kestrel here. Okay. And uh, and I've also done some bears and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. I, uh, uh, a lot of power carving, I assume, on those. Yes, mostly all power carving. I do some knife and gouges carvings out of the uh, my Santa Clauses and that. Mm -hmm. okay. And you can also see down here you got a another unfinished uh, hen. Be a, be a, uh, Looks like you got it about half wood burned already. Yes. I do wood burning and I do also texturing on it. Okay. The uh, the paint that you use, what are you uh, oil or are you acrylic type I, painting? I use mostly all acrylics, and uh, some some you can see I just use the just wood burn them and you leave them and natural with a little them natural. Yep. Uh huh. Um, I, it's a very nice display you have with the, with the cases. Do you make all those yourself? Yes, I, I make the cases. I make big ones, small ones, and uh, just just for the carvings and and the mounts and stuff like that. And do you have some items in the competition today as well? Yes, I do. I have a hooded meganser in the competition. I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna guess by the quality of your work, you're probably in the masters category. <laughs> well, I usually do end up winning the uh, blue ribbon in, in the categories now. So. Well, good luck with today's competition, right. and I'm glad that you uh, took the time to talk with us today. Well, this, this is about the fourth year I've been here, so I really enjoy the show. Excellent. I'll be back again. Thank you. All right. Our next carver is uh, Phil, Phil Hunick. Where are you from, Phil? I'm from Oostburg, Wisconsin. And how long have you been carving? I've been carving approximately 10, 11 years. Okay, and you're a member of the Kettle Carvers? Correct. For most yes, of that time, I take it. Right. Well, the first four years or so, I wasn't. Okay. But, uh, but now, now you've been a member for a number yes, of years. Yes. We we started in on that that uh, relief carving of Santa. Just a mm. great great work on getting the expression in the faces. I yeah. imagine that was the most difficult part. Yes. Uh, I saw something similar to that on a magazine cover, and I just wanted to put it to wood. So. And that is what I you come up with. You certainly did a nice job of, of capturing that expression. Well, thank you. You've got a large uh, gentleman here. Tell me yeah. a little bit about him. Uh, yeah, that is a mountain man. Uh, I took a class down in Nebraska with uh, Jeff Ferris, and I uh, had a... What uh, type of wood is that? That is butternut. It's laminated. It's cut in uh, about 15, 20 pieces and glued together. Okay. So you don't have to worry about splitting. How is that working with butternut? Is it a difficult wood? No, it's not. It's a uh, very nice soft wood. This particular piece had a few knots in it, but it gave it character. It certainly does. It's a nice, nice Thank piece you. of work. Um, looks as though your interest uh, moves over to caricatures. Yes, that is uh, the one first, of my favorites. This first item is a, a Rockwell piece, isn't it? That's right. It's Norman Rockwell. Uh, I like, I saw it on a magazine cover again. I, I hunt for those types of things, you know, and if I see something that inspires me, I like to go at it. The football and players are also a Rockwell. That's correct, yeah. And uh, that was a, a very fun piece. That was the first Rockwell I ever did. Uh, very, very, very nice. Your uh, sport <laughs> memorabilia car uh, caricatures are, are also uh, look to be a favorite. Yes, uh, the baseball players are a lot of fun. I've uh, had people uh, come to me, they, will want, they want some. Okay. <laughs> but uh, the manager there in the middle, I uh, call him Tommy Lasorda before Slim Fast, even <laughs> though he has a Mets uniform on. <laughs> it it uh, probably brings a chuckle to a lot of people's eyes when they see that. Correct. Yeah. A number of golfers that you have here yes. as well. Yeah, that guy in the green vest there, that was my first golfer I ever did. And after that, uh, I had to do about 40 of them for friends. Wow. 
the uh, the female figure is yeah. very nice uh, movement in the skirt. Very nice. Uh, yeah. Tough to get that. Tough that to get that movement. Movement. Not really. Well, there again, uh, I saw that in a sculptured uh, piece going through a furniture store once, and hmm. I, I liked the way that skirt was flowing and tried to put it to wood. I guess you get your inspiration from a lot of different Other locations. Things, correct. Once we see something, we like to go at it. Well, thank you for taking the time to talk with us today, and I okay. uh, hope everybody enjoys the show. Right. Thank you very much. Our featured carver at this year's show is Paul Tetzloff. Paul, where are you from? I'm from Fond du Lac. And uh, you've been carving for how long? Well, I started in the uh, 80s. Okay, so you've got quite a number of years quite in. A, quite a few years in, correct. I see by the work on your table here, you're predominantly a power carver. That's all I, that's all I carve with is power. Okay, and what type of wood do you I use? I use strictly Tupelo, which I get out of uh, Louisiana. Okay. Um, a little bit of wood burning, I take it? Very little. I, the only thing I burn are the primaries and the tail. Okay. Tell us a little bit about this kestrel that we have right here. Well, um, How long of a project is that to do a, a piece like that? It usually takes me anywhere from three to four hundred hours. Four hundred hours? Per bird. Okay. And that includes the painting that and the finish? That includes the painting and the finish, the whole works. And you use a very light uh, wash of uh, acrylics, you said? Right. I use 90% uh, water, 10% paint, and just build up the depth with uh, uh, excessive, mm -hmm. excessive coats. Layers and layers of, of right. paint. Right. Beautiful piece of work. The hummingbird is a nice little, little item as well. Mm -hmm. uh, you taught a class to um, a number of the kettle carvers on right. it, didn't you? Yes, we did. We did that uh, last, fall, last fall, yeah, in September. Very we nice. In September. Very nice. Tell us a little bit about the piece that you're working on right here today. That there is a uh, hen uh, bluebill, and uh, like I like I'm showing here, is I've got the head attached, and I've got all little filler in here to pick up the uh, imperfections and so okay. on and so forth. So you fill around that neck where you've dr drilled those two pieces Drill, together. Right. And, uh, and yet you can still car power carve on that wood filler. Right, right. And I, I use uh, generally a, uh, it's a 50-50 combination. And uh, I just sand it down and carve it. Okay. I understand you have a couple of items in our uh, competition today. What are those? It's a, I have a red-tailed hawk and a pintail uh, drake. Duck. They're not done, they haven't completed the uh, judging yet, no, but uh, not, not good sure. luck with those and well, thank uh, you. hope uh, you enjoy our show today. Thank you thank very you much. For, thank you for taking time to talk with us. Okay. Have a good day. Here's a, an exhibit of uh, the items that are up on the judging tables right now. Uh, our judges are going through and, and inspecting the work and, and rating uh, our competition. got a lot of items in different categories from from birds and wildlife to uh, to still life items these items are in the advanced category uh, multiple groupings Here's a nice Santa, that uh, old world Santa that was done in the, also in the advanced uh, human figure category. Wanted to thank everybody for attending our show, the 21st annual Kettle Carvers Artistry in Wood.